So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here again and uh, over the last uh, couple of months I received questions about bacteria, about bacteria and uh, so I decided to put together a video all you ever wanted to know about bacteria and I compiled, I compiled a list of 10 questions and uh, I'm just gonna go through those questions and over the next couple of minutes I'd like to give you a fascinating, a hopefully, a hopefully fascinating insight into those uh, interesting microorganisms and we're going to start off right away uh, with the first question is how small are bacteria? Well, um, they are approximately one micrometer or one micron across. Now, how, how much is that a micrometer? A micrometer is a millionth of a meter and a millimeter, and yeah, there's a tiny distance here, a thousand times smaller than a millimeter. Yeah, so of course, uh, bacteria are way too small to be seen with the unaided eye. And human body cells on average are approximately 10 times larger in diameter. But even that is too small to be seen with the unaided eye. With You do need a microscope for that. But uh, because uh, the diameter of a bacterium is 10 times smaller than a human body cell, for this reason, the volume is a thousand times smaller. Because you see, you have to calculate length uh, times width uh, times height. Um, it is a volume and uh, yeah, it's a thousand times smaller, a thousand times lighter. And therefore, it should not surprise you that on our body and in our body, especially in our digestive system, there are more bacteria growing than we have body cells, uh, way more. Some people estimate 10 to 15 times as many bacteria grow on our skin and in our body, in our digestive system, than we have body cells. And that's possible because bacteria are so much smaller than our body cells. So let's move on to the next uh, question, which is a little bit related. It's um, what magnification um, of a microscope do you need to see bacteria? How good does your microscope have to be? Well, short answer, you are able to see bacteria as very, very small dots um, already with a total magnification of 100 times. Um, but you're not going to be very satisfied with that. Uh, yeah, they are very small. Um, but generally, um, you're able to see them already starting 400 times total magnification. And with a 1000 times total magnification, then that's uh, you're able to observe them perfectly perfectly well. However, magnification is not everything um, because bacteria are transparent as well. And for this reason, um, it might be still difficult to observe them because of the low contrast. Um, so ideally, you have to use a so-called phase contrast microscope or you have to stain the bacteria. But if you don't um, yeah, have either of those uh, two possibilities, you are still able to see them with a bright field microscope, but it's got to be a reasonably good one. and. Uh, yeah, it's got to have a proper condenser and so on. And then you're also able to see them. But let's move on uh, to the next uh, question now. Can bacteria be found everywhere? Well, well, no, uh, they cannot be found uh, everywhere. They cannot be found in places where the environment is such that the chemistry of life is not able to take place. Uh, I think I need to explain this a little bit. Fire, for example. You cannot find bacteria in fire because uh, fire is so hot that the chemical bonds break uh, because uh, yeah bacteria they have a chemistry um, and like like all living things have and uh, if the heat is uh, if the temperature is too high um, then uh, the bonds break um, and then of course uh, yeah there are chemical reactions happening and the cell burns up and that's why of course it's not possible for uh, life uh, to take uh, place under these conditions and of course you also do not find bacteria there um, where there were no bacteria before and that's now another interesting thing. For example, in the center of the earth, forget about all of the heat yeah, and the pressure, but there are no bacteria there because how should they have reached it uh, there? Right? Um, so that is important uh, to also uh, know that bacteria cannot simply start um, on their own. They cannot form on their own. You need to have uh, yeah, uh, pre-existing bacteria there for bacteria to form because they reproduce by dividing. I know this is the chicken egg problem and I know that you want to know now what about the first bacterium on earth? Well, of course, uh, this must have been uh, an exception and scientists do have a few theories or speculations of how this might have happened. Yeah, But uh, generally bacteria can not emerge um, out of nothing um, and uh, therefore you cannot find bacteria there where there were no bacteria before. Hmm. Yeah, I know this is uh, uh, somewhat of an interesting, uh, yeah, in interesting approach here. So let's move on here. Um, how many different bacteria are there? This is a 
a difficult question. Well, actually, it can be an easy question. A lot. The answer is a lot. <laughs> uh, but the, it's difficult to answer because how do you want to define a bacterial species? <laughs> where do you draw the line? How can you say this is one type of bacterium and this is the other one? Is another one? Where do you, where do you draw the line? If you are, are asking for the different types of bacteria, different bacterial species, then you're thinking in categories. Um, and it's easy to count species. Um, yeah, for human, for for animals, mammals, and, and plants, and and, and 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 other higher organisms, it's easy because um, a species is uh, yeah a group of animals that reproduce with each other, and the offspring is also fertile. So there, we are assuming a form of, of sexual reproduction here, but bacteria don't do that. Uh, they reproduce by cell division alone. And therefore the species definition that we have um, for higher plants and animals uh, cannot be really applied um, to bacteria. Um, so we have to find different criteria here. And uh, yeah, because sometimes uh, the categorization of bacteria is not so easy because it's kind of it's transition there's a there's a big gray zone here so we, where do you want to draw the line uh, so you see it's a little bit of a philosoph philosophical problem as well here but generally the biodiversity of bacteria is is incredibly high and they know that or we uh, scientists know that because of dna studies that they have done and it uh, surpasses anything that we uh, yeah, can think of so let's move on um yeah, how are bacteria different from other cells? Well, in biology, we generally distinguish between two different cell types, so-called prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Um, all living things that you're able to see with your without a microscope, which are big enough, dogs, cats, trees, um, mosquitoes, <laughs> humans even, um, yeah, jellyfish, it doesn't matter. All of those living things um, are so-called eukaryotes and their cells basically are, as I mentioned before, about 10 micrometers in diameter, and they have a nucleus in the cell. And uh, so that's a structure, the nucleus is a structure in the cell where there's the DNA, the genetic material. And that's one cell type. And the other cell type are the so-called the prokaryotes uh, to which bacteria belong. And they are much, much smaller and much simpler. So they do not have a nucleus and they still have their own DNA, but the DNA floats around freely inside the cell. Yeah, and these are basically the two types of cells that we have. And um, even the prokaryotes now can be subdivided into different, yeah, okay, I'm, I think I'm not going to go into that direction, but even though um, we divide them into those two categories, you can of course always keep on subdividing them into subcategories. So let's move on again. So um, what, are bacteria, um, how, what are bacteria good for? This is a very common question and uh, some students ask me that. Well, what are they actually good for? I mean, you just uh, sit around to feed, uh, they reproduce. Um, what, what are they good for? I like to provoke back always and say, well, what, isn't this the same for all living things that we just basically live and, and reproduce and keep our species going into the next generations? Yeah, not a very satisfying answer <laughs> for many people. Um, and uh, for this reason, I always say bacteria um, are extremely important because they are responsible for closing the carbon cycle. Uh, what they do is, is they are breaking down and decomposing organic material um, and they're converting this organic material into carbon dioxide so that they are, uh, the plants can then use the carbon dioxide to make again new organic material. So for example, when um, the leaves fall to the ground in fall, uh, in autumn, um, yeah, or for example, when they're dead, dead animals somewhere, um, the waste products and so on, um, yeah, it is broken down. It's decomposed and bacteria do that. Of course, fungi also do that. Uh, protozoa, all, yeah, a variety of different uh, other organ organisms that are not bacteria that also are responsible for breaking it down. But bacteria play a very, very vital role in, in that. Without uh, yeah, that, yeah, we would have a buildup of waste uh, and it wouldn't be broken down. So yeah, extremely important. Yeah, of course, uh, you can also say bacteria important because they're helping us digest food. So there are lots of bacteria in our digestive system. Um, some bacteria are also used for food production. For example, yogurt um, is uh, yeah, milk fermented by bacteria. So plenty, plenty of uh, different uh, examples what bacteria are good for. Next question. Can bacteria die? No, they cannot die of old age. Um, this is not what happens. But of course, they can die when the environmental conditions are, are su such that life is not possible. So when you heat up 
um, yeah, bacteria when you in increase the temperature too much, then um, as I mentioned before, uh, this is a condition where chemistry of life cannot take place anymore um, and the bacteria die. Um, however, they have also found bacteria in places where you might not uh, assume this uh, to be possible. For example, in reactors with a very, very high radiation. The scientists found also bacteria there and they have uh, developed a method to actually repair the DNA damage of the radiation. So you see, um, sometimes some bacteria can be quite difficult uh, um, to get rid of yeah? because uh, they're very resilient or resistant. But it depends uh, on, on the type of bacterium that you're talking about. Are bacteria dangerous? Well, it depends on the bacterium, obviously. Um, generally, bacteria do not always have a very good reputation in the general public because yeah, bacteria and germs and diseases, it's all kind of the same thing. And indeed, uh, bacteria are a major cause of uh, medical problems in this world. Yeah, bacterial infections um, because of, of dirty water yeah, and other issues are a big problem, no question. Um, however, the majority of, the, of bacteria, yeah, they're not only good, but they're or just, just, just neutral, they don't care. Right, uh, they're just growing on our skin and in our digestive system, um, and uh, yeah, help us either protect uh, ourselves from other microorganisms, yeah, or they help us digest food. And the majority of bacteria they just don't care, yeah. Um, well, they don't care anyway because they don't have a brain, but they're just living, um, and they're just uh, yeah, living on and dividing, and and that's it. Yeah. So um, the majority of bacteria are not dangerous, but of course um, there are plenty of them out there that are the problem for medical diseases. Um, how are bacteria and viruses different? Well, um, they are hugely different. Uh, short answer again, bacteria are alive. Viruses are not considered alive uh, because viruses do not have their own metabolism, their own biochemistry. In other words, viruses are not able to reproduce on their own. And for this reason, they do not fit the definition of life. I know it's a question of definition and uh, in the past there have been some disputes among certain scientists um, concerning this uh, topic, uh, but uh, viruses need to invade a living cell in order to reproduce. So they're kind of hijacking a cell, they go into the cell, they're hijacking the biochemistry of the cell to reproduce um, and yeah, therefore they're not considered alive. Uh, yeah, and they need, they need life to be able to reproduce. And bacteria are um, alive because they can do that on their own, provided that they have enough food, of course. Yeah. And how do you study bacteria? That is the last uh, question. Well, how do you study them? There are a variety of ways how you can study them. Originally, uh, people used back in the good old days, a few hundred years ago, only microscopes uh, to study them. Um, later on, uh, yeah, they've uh, also started to culture and grow bacteria. So essentially you can study them by either these days by analyzing their DNA. It is a very common and straightforward method. You extract the DNA and you, an you sequence the DNA and then you type it into a database and then you can compare uh, whether your bacterium that you discovered already exists in the database or not. You can do a range of uh, biochemical tests um, on the bacterium. So you grow them in the laboratory and you basically analyze what are they made of chemically and this is how you can determine um, what they are uh, or you can also study them by uh, analyzing what they are producing their end products yeah, so bacteria they consume certain foods and they produce certain end products um, yeah, or intermediate products and by analyzing those substances chemically you can also study them yeah, so there are a variety of different uh, ways how you can do that uh, and the challenge of course is always because biodiversity is so high and there's so many yet undiscovered bacteria out there the chances are pretty good that you're going to discover something that has not been characterized yet and is not in the database. And this is, of course, always something uh, that might make some people happy because they've made a new discovery. But I think uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to encourage you, if you have any certain questions about bacteria, please um, post them in the comments section below. I actually might make up a follow-up video. And if you were kind of wondering a little bit of, uh, of the videos in the background here, these are, of course, all videos of bacteria that I have made using my microscope microscope and uh, you've already seen that um, yeah they have different shapes and some of them move and some of them don't move so biodiversity is quite high here i think i'm gonna leave it at that happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time bye bye